what your guys' explanation is for Willie Rodriguez's testimony that he hurt or that he heard, experienced, and his coworkers were actually burned by an explosion in the basement of the North Tower prior to the plane hitting. And this has been verified by at least 20 different eyewitnesses. Jim Max of Papa Mechanics. The uh, when the building struck when the plane struck the buildings, they uh, they penetrated the internal core. Jet fuel poured down uh, stairwells and elevator shafts, setting off secondary explosions. Not to mention the horrific impact of these fully loaded planes hitting the structure and Mr. causing Mix. enormous swaying. Give me, give me a second to okay. finish, Don. Okay. Um, it's it's interesting. In that testimony, he says that somebody came out of the elevator area with his skin hanging off. That would be consistent with a fire, not an explosion. And you sh you had a short clip of the Naudet brothers uh, documentary about that day and uh, of them entering the lobby. But what you didn't have was their voiceover where they say saw, they saw humans on fire, which would, again, would be completely consistent with what we saw uh, in all the reports on this, that jet fuel came down the elevator shafts. Uh, people, people died. We're talking about real human beings here. You know, this wasn't a movie. Yeah. This isn't we a parlor are, game. We are we're talking about real human beings. We need to respect them with the truth, sir. It's Relax interesting for a second. to know, too, that the yeah, you, you still, but you still didn't, you still didn't address the, the fact that it was before. Empire State Building crash back in 1945. Uh, that building's still standing, why are the Twin Towers down? But what's interesting about that 1945 crash with a much smaller plane going at a much lower speed had a lot of similarities in terms of the fuel pouring down the elevator shafts and stairwells and in fact igniting fires in the lobby of the Empire State Building. Sir, so hold on, true or false? The, the claim is that this, this fuel uh, knocked the fireproofing off all the steel, correct? That's the claim? No, nobody's claiming it knocked it off all the steel. It knocked it off approximately 60,000 square feet. The, well, that's the impact, the impact. The impact, uh, um, the impact of the plane another is bulldozing through the, uh, through the impact Now, we only floors. have a few minutes, and I want to get to Building 7. Dylan sure. Avery, what is your thesis? Oh, what happened to Building 7? Well, basically, which is, this is one thing that a lot of people don't know about September 11th, myself included, until I started doing the research. At 5.20 p.m. on September 11th, uh, World Trade Center Building 7, it was a 47-story steel frame skyscraper, 300 feet to the north of the north tower. Uh, at 5.20 p.m. this building collapses in under seven seconds, uh, completely into its own footprint into a, a debris pile about six or seven stories high. Now it wasn't hit by a plane, it was hit by debris from the North Tower when it fell, but if you look at all the buildings surrounding the World Trade Center, and if you actually look at Building 5, which is right underneath both the Twin Towers, that building is engulfed in flames for hours after Building 7 even collapses. So we have all the buildings surrounding the Twin Towers heavily engulfed with debris, some engulfed in flames. We have World Trade Center Building 7, which has isolated fire on floors 7 and 12. It has smoke coming from its south face, and these guys claim that 25% uh, of the building was scooped out. Even if 25% of the bottom of the building was scooped out, that still does not account for the building falling in perfect free fall. And into, your thesis about what happened? What it would have believe? had to have been a controlled demolition. That's the only way to prove, that's the only way to explain what we saw with our own eyes, and any attempts to discredit that are just not scientifically sound. You Jim know, Max. this is a wonderful example of how conspiracy theories work. Anytime there's a little bit of doubt, a little bit of area where we don't know everything, then the answer immediately is, well, someone must have blown it up. It's a form of argumentation that's also used by creationists. If they can find one little gap in the evolutionary record, they say, evolution's a hoax, or Mr. Holocaust Mix, denial. respect, these are two completely different things. Um, Holocaust denial works with very similar <laughs> oh, logic. Oh my um, god, man. And. Um, <laughs> But what we see here is we, one of our sources was Vincent Dunn, the retired uh, deputy fire chief for the New York City Fire Department, who wrote the textbook, The Collapse of Burning Buildings. And, and what he explained is that the building was extremely unconventional. It had this giant uh, Con Ed substation with enormous trusses carrying extraordinarily high loads, very vulnerable to fire and uh, other kinds of damage. It was not a conventional skyscraper by a long shot. Those fires burned un, unfought for seven hours fed by uh, diesel tanks that were in the building to, to fuel backup generators. The, um, and when those trusses ultimately failed, the building did collapse in its own footprint. That's what happens when a building's internal supports We only fail. have uh, th about one minute, and we okay. have to divide it. Can you respond to that point and make your larger point? Go ahead, Burmis. On, on top of everything you said, that's where everybody Jason rushed here for the local government, OK? We have somebody who was on the 23rd floor, OK, working with the local government, being escorted by firefighters. He gets down to the 8th floor. Huge explosion in Building 7. Bomb goes off. OK, this is his words, not mine. Why are there explosives in Building 7? On top of that, they've given five different reasons why it fell. They're trying to say generators. There was a big fuel tank. There's a 20-story uh, thing scooped out of the building, all they of which is false. They keep changing their explanations for why the building know. fell. And I would say this. The 9-11 Commission report actually has the nerve and a footnote to say that it collapsed in 18 seconds. Look for yourself and time it. It's no more than seven seconds. And who do you believe blew up Building 7? We don't want to try to implicate anybody. We're just trying to tell people.
people to go out and research for themselves. But, I mean, you have to ask yourself, who could have possibly placed explosives inside World Trade Center Building 7 secretly without anyone noticing, and especially the Twin Towers? Especially now, again, the CIA, the DOD, the Secret yeah, I mean, Service that, are that all That building was a there. government hotspot. Ten seconds. Yeah. You know, Ten conspiracies minutes. have a way of constantly expanding. You just listed a whole range of government agencies. Apparently the firefighters we talked to, we at Popular Mechanics, other journalists, our friend David Korn at The Nation is accused of being part of this uh, massive cover-up. The fact is, there are always little details that don't always add up until you finish your research, but when you really yes, dig down, research, every single one of events. these has a clear explanation. And if there's areas that don't, let's continue to dig. We should be skeptical, we should ask questions. By We're all means, we fully support the effort to get to the bottom of We're any remaining questions. We're going to have to leave questions. it there. Uh, David Dunbar and Jim Meggs of Popular Mechanics uh, and Jason uh, Burmis and Dylan Avery of mm -hmm. Loose Change. I want to thank you all for being with us. Uh, yeah. Encourage you, people Goodman. to thank come you, out to, New, uh, to Cooper Union tonight at, um, in New York for Voices of Resistance and Change, Democracy Now!'s 10th anniversary, Breaking the Sound Barrier. That does it for the show. Special thanks to Sharif abdel Kadus. Our website, Democracy now.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.